This is another program of Near and Far. I'm Richard Kemp, and my guest today is Wendy Love from the uh, Vermont Commission on Women. Welcome here to the Green Mountain State, the Queen City, city on the west coast of New England. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, where's headquarters for you? We're headquartered in Montpelier, right across from the State House. Right across from the State House? Yes. Okay. And Vermont Women, the Vermont Commission on Women. Mm -hmm. Why why is it such an organization and, and, and is the state paying for this? Are the taxpayers paying for this? Well, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about who we are and mm -hmm. what we do. Uh, we are a nonpartisan, independent state agency and we are dedicated to making sure th uh, that there is equity for all Vermonters in the area of legal, economic, and social and political equity, that everybody is treated fairly in the state of Vermont. We're the only state agency that is solely uh, devoted to women's issues. Okay. So you don't do anything with men? We most certainly do, because our motto is, if you improve the lives of women, you improve the lives of everyone. Mm -hmm. And how long has this agency been around? Well, in 1962, President John F. Kennedy challenged all the states to create a, c a commission on the status of women to do two things. Mm -hmm. One, to uh, decrease discrimination against women, and two, to increase opportunities for women. So in 1964, then Governor Philip Hoff created the Governor's Commission on the Status of Women. So we've been in existence since 1964. Mm -hmm. And then through the years, it was shortened to the Governor's Commission on Women. And then in, 19, in, in 2002, we were put into statute before we were in existence with executive order. Mm -hmm. And when we put into statute, because the, uh, my 16-member board, which is really a commission, mm -hmm. uh, were, used to be appointed by the Governor, and now they're appointed by the Governor by the Speaker of the House, by the Senate Committee and Committees, and by the Republican and Democratic Parties. So we changed wait our minute, name. Wait a minute. I, I have a question I know here. where you're going. <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> yes? No reference to the Progressive Party making any input into this? to the Progressive Party making any input into this? Well, let me uh, first of all explain what happened. Is this bill, put in a statute, was written in the last minutes of the session in 2002, in about an hour and a half. <laughs> and we are sort of looking at making a lot of changes to it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, of course, is these provisions. I think what they were looking at in the, when they wrote the bill was to make sure that there was represent, broad representation from the community. Because there was the perception that since all the appointees were for the, from the governor, that the commission reflected the governor's politics. Mm -hmm. Now, the commission has existed through Republican and through Democratic administrations. Mm -hmm. So as we look at that, we are constantly looking at how do we reflect the entire community. For example, we'd like to make sure that there are young people on the commission, mm -hmm. that we have broad geographic representation, that we have we go across the political spectrum. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at that, and and there are limitations for each of the appointed authorities of how many of one party they may have. Mm -hmm. So they may not have the governor may not have more than four of one political party. So what we really will say to our point of authorities, make sure that as you appoint folk, and they could be men, you could be a member of our commission. Well, that, that, that brings up a point. Yes. Uh, this commission, is it gender balanced? At this point, it is not, but we do a study. One of the things we do is we look at all 199 commissions mm -hmm. uh, that are appointed by various appointed authorities for gender balance. Mm -hmm. And the vast majority of them do not have gender balance. Uh, in fact, uh, they're, would you like to take a guess at which way they're balanced or which way the majority is? Just the way most things go in our society, out of balance is probably yes. all males. Mostly males. And in fact, we just uh, did a study that looked at that. And I believe there are only, 
I think it's uh, 19 committees out of the 199 that have a feminine majority, and those are traditional committees like mental health and some of the committees that women should have enter interest in. I think there are less than 50 percent that are gender balanced, but the vast well, majority are male uh, dominated still. Well, then the challenge is out either to you or to somebody to get these things to be gender balanced. Now, you know, you could talk about legislative bodies that should be gender balanced, mm -hmm, but that's mm -hmm. governed by, by elections. But here you have a, a circumstance where people could be appointed to the job and somebody, I'm going to say, somebody is not really doing the job okay. for the women. <laughs> and let's go back and talk about one of the things why we came into existence and mm -hmm. what Kennedy was looking for. What he really looked for was to to reduce discrimination mm -hmm. and increase opportunities. And one of the ways we look at that is to try to increase opportunities for women to take part in public life. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we have, and I just so happen to have it here, yes. is a booklet that talks about getting appointed to state, board, to Vermont boards and commissions. And this so actually men could get that too? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And it is on our website, but we also have this, and it talks about how you use, how do you write a resume to get appointed to a board or a commission? Mm -hmm. So instead of the typical, I was born, I went to school, and here's my job history, well, what is it that you would bring to a citizen board? Mm -hmm. So you could talk about your volunteer experiences, your life experiences, and this lists all of the uh, commissions. i just be, be on camera for a little bit. Talks about how do you find out who does the appointing and stresses that to get appointed to a board, you don't have to be an expert in that particular field. Mm -hmm. Because voters, you know, we're all citizens of Vermont. And in fact, one of the issues is do you have to be old enough to vote? Now, there are some commissions in the yeah. state that have student members. And that is one of the things that we are looking at as we revise our statute, is how do we get youth membership? Mm -hmm. uh, because you're saying youth, are you, are you talking about people under uh, 18? Absolutely. Yeah. We're looking at high school students. In fact, when I first came to the commission two years ago, we had a high school student mm -hmm. who was a member of the commission, and she was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, one of the things we do is we do do public hearings, and we did a summit at a, uh, an area high school several years ago to see what do young women and young men want. Mm -hmm. Because I think equity helps all of us. Yeah. This, this booklet on how to get appointed mm -hmm. to commissions and stuff, uh, are these provided free or does someone have to pay for it? Absolutely. No, they are free. They're on our website. Uh -huh. uh, you just could, uh, if you don't have access to a computer, you could write us a note mm -hmm. uh, and, and we would be more than happy to send one out to Those addresses are going to be on the screen, so okay. I have your pen, pens and, pens and pen, pencils and paper ready and write that down. Um, and if you have access to a computer, if you just put Vermont Commission on Women into a Google search, we come right up. Oh, is that right? Yes, uh -huh. yes. Also, you know, for those that are not aware, many of the public libraries uh, in the state of Vermont uh, have access to the World Wide Web, so you could, if you don't yes. have a computer at home, you And many over. libraries do have a copy of this publication. I know mm -hmm. that when we put it out, and it constantly, one of the things I do is public education, mm -hmm. and I go out and talk to numerous groups. I talk to, high, in fact, I think it's tomorrow, I am, although today's Friday, next That's week, right, next right. Tuesday, mm -hmm. I'm talking to a high school class in Montpelier, and I have talked out at some of the vocational um, education programs schools, I talk to women's groups, I've so talked to rotaries. So that's a that's a little note a little advertising note to the teachers that are watching this program. Absolutely we will provide wanna, informa yeah. information to uh -huh. them. Yes. You have a couple of other booklets here that you want to talk about? Yes, let me talk a little bit about what it is we do. Go ahead. People want to know what do we do and how do we work to reduce discrimination and encourage opportunities. And I think it's several ways. One of them is in public education. And we have a website uh, we, uh, which have a lot of resources of where to go or how to find information. Mm -hmm. We publish a yearly report on the status of women in the state of Vermont, mm -hmm. uh, which we present to the legislature, and that is also on our website. You know, how are we doing educationally? Uh, how are women doing? What 
is the balance on the board, on the commissions, are, are they gender balanced? What percentage of the legislature are women? How are we doing over the years? How is that, how is that gone? Mm -hmm. um, we've looked at things, for example, in the school system. What percentage of paraeducators are women? What percentage of teachers are women? Mm -hmm. What percentage of principals are women? What percentage of superintendents are women? Wow. What percentage of school boards are women? So This is pretty exhaustive. <laughs> we, we look at this. We look, for example, how do people get involved in public life? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's through a school board. Sometimes it's through a select board. And we just recently did a study to say what percentage of select boards are women. What percentage of select boards have no women members at all. Mm -hmm. And we were surprised to find that only, I think it's about 17% of select boards are women, and over 50% of the boards in the state have no women members at all. At all. Yeah. So we do programs, in fact there'll be one coming up sponsored by the um, Franklin County Business and Professional Women uh, that will look at how as a woman do you get involved in political life. Mm -hmm. And three Vermont legislators from Franklin County will be talking about how do they get into public life? What route did, did they take? Um, so those are That's the kinds of things we do in public education. We also advocate for changes in policy, sometimes in laws, sometimes in rules and regulations. Uh, but we are an advocacy agency. Uh, do you look at the um, wage disparity that exists between men and women? Absolutely. Now this is like this is like hitting me, pitching me a ball that I could hit over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I I, re I remember seeing these buttons, and and this was uh, quite <laughs> some time ago, and it had, I, I forget what it was, but it you know it said uh, you know fifty nine cents to the dollar or something, Ab and I think that's all that it said. And I was with a friend, I said, what, what are you talking about? What, what does that stuff mean? Okay. <laughs> you know, it's it, not, the numbers are not probably correct, but... Uh, oh, no, unfortunately, they are correct in what? many ways. Back same? in 1963, uh, there was an act passed that said equal pay for equal work, which said that, which found that women were being paid about 59 cents on the dollar for every dollar that a man made. So uh, that, that that legislation was it federal or state? Federal legislation, but it only covered agencies that in, or, or organizations that engage in interstate commerce. Oh. So eighty percent of Vermont companies are small and are not covered by this. And they found over the years that the wage gap has gradually shrunk. Mm -hmm. So it's about that women earn about seventy-five percent of what men earn of white what white men earn. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in the presidential campaign, Carol Mosley Brown pointed out that black and Hispanic women are still making only 50% of what white men are making. Mm -hmm. And in Vermont, it's, it's about 80%. And that's, um, and, and that's not changed. And this is across all professions. So when they do the studies, they find that profession by profession, the pay gap between what men and women make for equal work, mm -hmm. equal education, equal work. And I'll give you a very good example of, of what happens. There was a company in Vermont which has been covered by this legislation since 1963. And a couple of years ago, a woman was working on the assembly line. Mm -hmm. And she, she, in casual conversation, found out that one of her co-workers on the assembly line, a male, who came three months to work after she did, was earning 50 cents an hour more. Oh, and she went to her boss and said, why? And he said, well, it's simple. He's a man. He has a family to support. <laughs> oh, gee. So that happened. So what happened in 2002, after many, many years, we got the Vermont Equal Pay for Equal Work legislation passed, oh, that which right? said that if you are doing the exact same work, all other things be equal, you may not discriminate on the basis of sex and pay women less. Do you know what the penalty is if you found? 
Uh, you get, re well, first of all, you have to know, you have to find a way to discover if you're being paid less. Mm -hmm. But um, it is, and you have to bring suit, and mm -hmm. you have to win, and you do, and very often what happens, the minute you bring suit, you get fired. Mm -hmm. uh, you get retaliated against. And so I do believe that you not only get your back wages reinstated, but I think it's double the wages. It's a fairly stiff penalty. penalty. Uh -huh. But what happens is, is very few suits are being brought. Why is that? Because women are afraid to find out or to ask. Mm -hmm. And why are they afraid? Because they get, number one, they get fired very often if they ask. And number two, many companies make you sign as a condition of employment. You sign a little letter that says, I will not discuss my salary with anybody. Now, it's one thing to say, I will not discuss my tr the trade secrets of this company with a competitor. <laughs> Perfectly understandable. That's, yeah, that's reasonable. But I will not discuss my salary. Many companies had employee manuals that when you joined, it said, as a condition of my employment, I read the employee manual, and I accept it. Buried in there, it says, you, I will not discuss my salary or my wages with anybody. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but is that legal? Absolutely legal, because it's a contract. Now, oh. what just passed the House of Representatives yesterday was a very simple bill, and it's taken us many, many years to get this out of committee, and, and, and it would pass the House, so now it goes to the it's Senate, done. which says companies may no longer require employees to sign a uh, statement that says they will not discuss their salaries. Mm -hmm. They may no longer have it personnel policies, and they may not retaliate against someone who, in the course of casual conversation, discusses their salary. So, Richard, you and I are sitting here, and you and I work at the same company. I said, you know, Richard, I don't think I'm being paid the same amount. What do you make? I make $25 an hour. <laughs> oh, really? Well, you know, gee, I made, um, I make 20 Now. Well, but I have a family. Well, well, let's just talk about <laughs> education. Oh, I, we both got a BS degree. Okay, we do. And, and you've been here five years, and yes. I've been here five years. So now I go to my boss. Well, Mr. Smith, you know, I don't understand it. We, we do the same work. Mm -hmm. And let's, for example, say that, that, um, that we work the same time, because mm -hmm. you can get paid more if you have seniority, not an age, just in point of service. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and we've done, we've, there's a merit system, and we've both gotten glowing reviews. No mm -hmm. difference in the mm -hmm. merit system. And our job is exactly the same. Well, not only could I be fired for going or retaliated against because I went to my boss, you could be fired also. Oh, wow. Just for discussing. Now, needless to say, this is, does not encourage people to talk. Now, this is nothing about union organizing. Union organizing has always been protected against retaliation. There's a whole other level there. Yes, and that has always been a protected class. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't protect you if I go into the financial director and I steal the copy of the uh, pay scale or uh, he leaves it on the copier and I pick it up. You can't do that. That's illegal. But we're talking about casual conversation over the water cooler. Now, I, I'm just curious, that legislation must have engendered a lot of conversation, I would think. It did. Uh, now, I just moved to the state two years ago, and when it was up the last biennium, the way it was written, a lot of business owners thought it would do more than it was intended to do. Mm -hmm. So we really rewrote the legislation to make it very clean, to mm -hmm. say, here it is, unambiguous. Yeah, yeah. And, and we did not, there was no comment from some of the business organizations. There was no comment? There was no comment this wow. time around. Ooh. Yes. I, I would have envisioned that it would be a lot of screaming and hollering. Uh, no, not this time around. Oh, wow. um, as you and I both know, when we testified against I I for increasing the minimum wage, mm -hmm. and that's another thing that the commission is very interested in, is a livable wage yeah. for all Vermonters. <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah. and that the business community was very concerned about the effect of it on small businesses. Mm -hmm. Actually, that was a testimony the next day oh, that yes. I listened to, yes, uh -huh. that the concern. But there is no concern. But it took a long time. Yeah. And right now, the way we're going in Vermont, we still think it's going to be 20, 
33 before women are paid equally for doing the same work as men. 2033? Yes. Why is it going to take so long? What is that? Well, I don't think overnight yeah, that women are going to immediately go and say, let's discover oh. why I'm being paid. You know, a lot, oh, of it, a lot of it is there's discrimination, but a lot of it is as women don't see themselves as having power. Mm -hmm. And why don't they? When they grow up in schools, do they see the example of women who have contributed to the growth of their state? No. They maybe learn three or four names, but they don't see that women were part of the community. Young boys don't see women as contributing. They don't see women as having value. In fact, we have a project now that's called our women, Vermont Women's History Project mm -hmm. to try to both bring out the women who've made important contributions to the state, get it into the school curriculum. Mm -hmm. When people tour the State Historical uh, Society uh, uh, exhibit, a wonderful exhibit, by the way, in Montpelier, mm -hmm. they see the role of women. When they go to the Shelburne Museum, they really see the role of women. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a very direct parallel here. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. What is the parallel? Are you looking at the parallel between other groups that have face discrimination in the United States? Absolutely. It's very slow. Back in 1968, I was a teacher in Ohio and was part of a group that tried to rewrite the social studies curriculum mm -hmm. to reflect the experience of black Americans. Now, do we see it all through the, the textbooks yet? Maybe. No. Oh, you say no. <laughs> no, one or two, one or yeah, two. Yeah, but yeah, I think yeah. that we're talking about social change, and that takes time, mm -hmm. and that's what we're dedicated no. to. To. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just sort of impatient. I think the. No, I know, and we are too. The injustices and Absolutely. stuff should stop today. Absolutely. And not, uh, not continue on. And that's what we're dedicated but to. But I'm, I'm glad that the legislation is in there and. Uh, the wheels of justice are starting to move. And they, and they move slowly. Oh, Perhaps I should slowly. talk to you about how we form policy at the com commission. Mm -hmm. I said that we have multiple appointing authorities. We ha I, I report I have 16 commissioners. They're volunteers. Mm -hmm. They come from around the, the state. state. And they make policy and on what issues we're going to look at, what's important. Mm -hmm. what, and, and it has to be something that significantly affects women. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's on, top of, on top burner right now? Well, we're really looking at early care and education and all the proposals. We really would like to see quality daycare mm -hmm. because the fact of the matter is, is women not only want to work, but have to work to survive. Mm -hmm. And as you and I heard testimony, if the family is making $33,000 a year with both salaries and 7000 of that is going to daycare, plus that, the day, salaries of daycare workers are some of the lowest in the state. Mm -hmm. you know, we profess to care about our children. We profess to care about our elders. The lowest salaries in the state are paid to individuals who work in the child care sector, individuals who work in nursing homes mm -hmm. and home care agencies, yep. caring for our very vulnerable seniors. Yeah. So we're mm -hmm. looking to say that we want quality child care and education and, and research now shows that what happens in that very vulnerable period from before birth mm -hmm. to the time a child enters school is very crucial. And yep. all the amount of remediation we have to do um, during school is expensive. And we yep. need to invest our dollars wisely and, well, uh, and you early. S you say it's expensive, but um, if we have an educated society, in a healthy society, it's money well spent. It is absolutely <laughs> money well spent, and it yeah. needs to be put in to that early period. Yeah. So the interest of the commission is not only do we want quality programs out there, we want the people, we want to attract quality people mm -hmm. to come into that field, and they need to be paid equitably. A livable wage. You you can say a livable wage. It's all right. Yes, yes. And I have a bias because yes. I, I was a member of the Peace and Justice Center. Yes, so, and so that sort of is one yeah. of uh, also our our big areas of concern is is working towards livable wage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so yes. there's no question about it. Um, yes. Wendy, uh, we have a few more minutes left, mm -hmm. and I just want to um, ask you, do you what do you see? You might have touched on it already. The, the biggest challenges that are coming before the commission over the next year or next six months or something. What's the biggest challenge that you see? 
I, to your I, organization. Okay, one of the things that was interesting as we um, uh, went into statute and the broad base was broadened even more to be inclusive of uh, women who come from very different parts of the political spectrum mm -hmm. is to find the common ground of, of, of areas that we all agree on and we're finding that women, regardless of their political orientation, have a tremendous amount of agreement on these issues. Mm -hmm. But people somehow still see us as um, uh, representing only one particular set of views. And the challenge, in fact, this law that was just passed had full support of the Women's Political Caucus, at mm -hmm. the Legislative Caucus at the state, to see that these issues are not partisan issues. They're issues that affect all Vermont families mm -hmm. and that we need to get beyond partisan politics into a we, they. And I think we're positioned very well as the commission to say we represent the broad political sp spectrum from the far right to the far left mm -hmm. and these are issues we come together to agree that they're important and let's not politicize them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the real challenge to get above politics. For example, health care to get above the politics and say we need a solution, we need it, and we need it now. We need it now, yeah. Yes. Well, Wendy, I want to thank you very much for coming uh, all the way from Essex and Montpelier and uh, wish you well, and um, thanks again for being with uh, me. And thank you very much for having okay. me. Good. Okay, good.